Praise God. Praise God. I'm so happy to be here and be with you. Is that good enough? <laughs> Are you happy to be with me? <laughs> the Lord is present, and in his presence, the Bible tells us that there is fullness of joy. So we pray that whatever your basket can hold concerning the joy of the Lord I pray that God will fill it up and to the overflow. We welcome you here to the celebration of eternal life. This is what God offers us as his children, eternal life. So we come together and we celebrate eternal life through the Son of God. We thank the Lord for all that he has done in our lives and all that he will do as we yield to his spirit, and be in obedience to his word. Uh, if you are here for the first time, I, I don't see any first-time visitors, but uh, we welcome each and every person today, and thank you for those who are returning visitors. We just pray that uh, God will meet you at the point of your need, whatever your need is today, that he will certainly speak into your life and give you uh, what you need. Now for the announcements. First of all, we'd like to thank our Catholic brothers and sisters for this uh, display of beauty uh, in nature. This uh, bouquet here and uh, on behalf of the um, Catholic Church we thank them that it beautifies um, this place and helps us to uh, be of good cheer. Um, the announcement I'd like to uh, give to you is in your bulletins, and I'd like for you to turn with me. And uh, Women's Fellowship is coming. When is, it, when is it going to happen? Tuesday, you're reading your bulletin. Praise the Lord. You see the announcement. And what are you to do? Ladies, bring an appetizer, something that you like to share. And you, I hear that you're having a lot of fun. I, and I'm almost tempted to come and just sit among you. But I won't do that. Uh, but I will help get it together. So that's going to be Tuesday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 4 in the Corbari Conference Room. Chapel concert is coming. Praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Chapel concert is coming that we offer to the community that we have the gifts that God has bestowed upon us and we want to share it with them. We want them to be blessed as we have been blessed by the organ and the viola. I started to say viola, but she's not here. So uh, we want you to uh, sign up. Some of us have already signed up and there is a, a volunteer uh, sheet 
on the table there. Uh, please um, sign up. And they're looking for people for the Krabari area. Is, uh, it's one of the most populated areas, and they're needing some people to participate and do a announcement to the community in a, in a form of a flyer. So uh, we ask that you would uh, volunteer. And you can see Hal or Diana, uh, or you can also email them with that information that you're volunteering to serve. And uh, there are no other announcements, so um, get ready for the presence of the outpouring of the Spirit of God in this place. Amen. Join us as we sing together. This is me on okay. Let us pause for a moment of silent prayer. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Swiftly o'er those waters to the city far away. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lamb. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to the great I Am. Good morning. Do you feel wellness or not? In his presence, we're in his presence, and we bring our needs before him. Some of them we can speak and let other people know what our needs are, but there are times when our hearts are heavy and we lift our prayers before God in unspoken requests. Let us join together. Father God, we are so grateful that you are acquainted with our human struggle. And Father God, we pray that you will continue to pour into our lives and for those of us who are dealing with physical afflictions, Lord, we receive our healing. Father, for those of us who are dealing with other afflictions, Lord, we receive our healing. And Father, we just ask that you be glorified in this place and that you would cover every family that's represented here with the comfort that only you can provide. And Lord, we pray for those among us who grieve the loss of their loved ones. Father, we pray for our dear beloved sister Jeanette, and we pray that you will continue to undergird her with the strength from the other world, the world that we look to, the world that we look to be reunited with our loved ones that have gone before us. Father, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us continue to sing and celebrate our victories. Do you have victory? Yes. Let's sing our victories in Jesus' name. Amen. stand for the doxology. so grateful that you have blessed us bountifully and Lord with the gifts that we have received we in return give back to you for the furtherance of your kingdom bless those who give out of their need and those who give out of their abundance in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated Um, by a composer that's kind of a favorite of my name, Bob. 
Uh, <laughs> and uh, he actually wrote uh, this piece of music uh, with a very specific um, purpose in mind. This is part of the cantata. Uh, the cantata is called Walk It Out. And it, it means sleeper's way. And I have to get this just right. So um, I just wanted to let you know about why he wrote this. Uh, some of the most joyful music of Bach is created in the midst, or actually of anybody, is created in the midst of difficult circumstances. While he was displaced, uh, while his home was undergoing reconstruction, Bach wrote this most famous of cantatas. Um, uh, for, and, and, and this is uh, actually, he's got a huge catalog as part of that. Um, but Philip Nikolai, the composer of the Carlton tune, found comfort in the midst of the death of, of a pupil by contemplating eternal life. This is called Sleeper's Wake. <laughs> That was refreshing. Thank you, Mark and Catherine and the choir and all of those of you who serve 
as unto the Lord. We are so grateful that you are here today. And we pray that the word of God will find a lodging place in your heart. Because the word of God does never, ever return to him void. So as the word of God is sown in the soils of your heart, it is to produce the fruit from Holy Spirit that you have been sealed with as believers. Amen? Being sure of your future is what we've been talking about for the past several weeks. And uh, we, we pick up the text in uh, 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 15. And you can follow me with your scriptures in the bulletins, or you can follow me with scriptures on your cell phone, or you can follow me with scriptures in your Bible. But follow me. Amen? Amen. Verse 11, And this is the testimony God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son John reminds us that there is no greater authority to testify that we receive eternal life through believing in Jesus Christ now we know that the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, and the soul that sins shall surely die. But that was not God's intent for us to ever, ever, ever experience death. It was a choice that we made. Our four parents made a conscious choice to disregard God's purpose for them. And his purpose was for us to live forever. So Jesus came to renew that purpose. Some would assume that they could live by doing good deeds and righteous works to earn eternal life. Nobody wants to go to hell. Nobody wants to be absent from the presence of God. So God offers us an opportunity to spend eternity with him through Jesus Christ. It is the fact that you and I are sinners, and Jesus died for our sins so that we could receive forgiveness. Hallelujah. I love forgiveness. Don't you? I am so grateful that God provides opportunity for us to be forgiven. And you know what? He doesn't remind us of what we've been saved from. He doesn't remind us of our sin. He doesn't point his finger at our sin. And neither do we point the finger at other people's sins that God has forgiven. Amen? Amen? Upon repentance, you were baptized in a watery grave and rose to new life in Christ to celebrate his victory over death, hell, and the grave. That's when we are baptized, when we submit our will, when we submit our body to be baptized as a symbol of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. To be identified with him. To be identified as being born again. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise to be preserved until the day of redemption. So God places his spirit in us so that when Jesus Christ comes in the air, we have a ticket to go up and be with him. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. That is our ticket that we have been preserved 
because of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit in us. And we identify with Christ through his Spirit and through the Word of God. You were sealed on the day of promise until the day that God redeems you. Amen? Verse 12, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever has the Son, regardless of where you've come from, regardless of what you've been delivered from, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. It matters not whether you are Jew or Gentile, your race or your ethnicity, male or female or otherwise. When you come to Jesus Christ in repentance, your soul is saved for all eternity. Hallelujah, somebody. There is salvation through Jesus Christ that we are saved for all eternity. Out eternity. That's good news. That's good news. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says that this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. A new person. When you come to Christ, you may look the same. Hello. You didn't get a new face. You didn't get a new body. Same body, same face, but you're a new creation. Because you've been born again by the Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of God has come to dwell within you to lead you and to guide you and to comfort you and to empower you to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Glory to God, somebody. That is the connection. We have been connected with Christ. We've been connected with God through Jesus Christ. It is all about Jesus living in Christ is evidence of eternal life. You live for the Lord. It's not about you living for yourself. You live for for the Lord. You live to be an example for the Lord. You live so that God can use you to speak and reach other people who are lost. And the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish. That's the heart of God. He is not willing that any person leave this planet without coming into relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. What a God we serve. How patient, how merciful, how loving, how forgiving our God is. That he waits. He waits. And he waits. And he waits until a person recognizes that they're going to need a Savior. To be in his eternal presence. Galatians chapter 2, 20, 21. This is the New Living Translation, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer me who lives, but Christ lives in me so that I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Hello. Jesus Christ is the epitome of God's grace. And what is grace? Unmerited favor. And so when the grace of God appears to you and I, God is revealing to you unmerited favor that we can't earn, that we will never be able to achieve. And this is the grace that empowers us to give grace to others. Hallelujah. Because we're saved by grace, not by works. 
of righteousness, but by the grace of God. The bottom line, without a relationship with Christ, no matter how we avoid it or being associated with religion, people, when you start talking about the Lord, well, I'm not religious, uh, and, and, and I, I don't want anything to do with religion, and, and, and you need to ask them, well, do you want anything to do with God? He's not asking you to be religious. He's not asking you to join a religion. He is asking you to have a relationship with him. Do you want to have a relationship with someone that's wicked? Huh? I don't think so. You will run from them. So God is offering us a relationship because he is the God of love. And when we are in relationship with him, we want to spend time with him. We want to have a relationship with him. Heaven will not be your final destination if you have no relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Heaven is not going to be your final destination. People live like hell on this earth, and then when they get to the end of life, they want to go to heaven. And if they repent and receive Jesus Christ, God will forgive them, and they will enter into God's heaven. But some people are so hell-born, hell-driven, hell, hell that they're going to get their desire. But God wants us to be with him. Verse 13, verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, so that you may know, so that you may know that you have eternal life. That you may know. Sometimes we forget. Anybody forget anything in here? Any, anybody forget anything this week? Anybody forget anything this morning? So he's reminding you so that you know, regardless of your situation that occurs in life, you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to drop a bunch of H-bombs, so get used to it. Hallelujah. He wants you to know because you believe in the Son of God that you have eternal life. Our salvation is never based on our feelings. Check this out. On Sunday, the Spirit of God was impactful as we worshiped together. We had a good time. The Lord blessed us. We were joyful and on Monday, we were met with a situation that challenged our trust in God and made it difficult for us to see God uh, through this. Well, you know, well, God, why is this happening? Well, you know, I, 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 I was so excited, Lord, about what you were doing, and, and now this has come upon me. And then on Tuesday... You were hit with another problem and wanted to curse the day. I know that there's nobody in here that would want to curse the day that God has given you because of situations that have befall, befell upon you. I know that you don't want to do that. I know that's not in your heart to say, well, I, I, well, I just need to just forget about this day. I want to start all over again. God, why did you just allow me to have this kind of day? So he is reminding us, regardless of what kind of days you may have, what kind of struggles you may have, if it depends on us, we feel saved on some days. Hello. I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. In other days, we don't feel so saved. 
Because salvation is not by your feelings. It's not how you feel, but it's who you hope in. And who has promised you the promise of eternal life. Because we have a lot of issues. We have a lot of problems. This is a problematic world we live in. This is a troubled world we live in. And sometimes other people's trouble will merge over into your trouble. And then you have a calamity. Is that, is that somebody's keeping time for me? Praise God. <laughs> yes, we're going to move right along here. We can only know by walking in the Spirit that our salvation rests in Jesus and not in performance. Not in performance, but our salvation rests in Jesus. In restating this message, John hopes to persuade us to believe God's testimony even if we already believe, he wants us to know that we have eternal life because of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So regardless of what happens, we can continue to believe. Regardless of what happens in the world, and there are some, going to be some strange things happening in the world that will cause you maybe to question whether, you know, is, is, is the Bible real? When I see these unspeakable things that I've never seen or have never experienced before, is the Bible real? He is making you assured that the Bible is real, that the message, the testimony of God is real. Verse 14, and this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything... Anything according to his will, he hears us. The stipulation is anything according to his will. Knowing that our salvation depends on what Jesus has done for us, you can trust his faithfulness and live with conviction. Live with conviction in your heart of what God has said in the Bible, don't be swayed, don't be moved by popular opinion, don't be swayed and moved by uh, peer pressure. Be moved by the truth and stand uh, in the truth for what you know is truth. After all, he conquered our greatest enemy, death, hell, and rose from the grave with all power in his hand. He gave us eternal life and sent the Holy Spirit to indwell, empower, lead, and guide us into all truth. Now the Holy Spirit is within you to guide you to all, into all truth. When he speaks to you, when he prompts you to do something, then you need to do it. Because if you don't do it, then calamity is coming. Then problems are going to happen. Because you refuse to be led by the Spirit and be led by your own emotions. And be led by your own heart. Rather than being led by the Spirit of God. God has called us to be hearers and doers of his word. Our needs will be met in our relationship with Jesus Christ, and our desire will be a living witness to Jesus Christ. That's our desire. Lord, be glorified in my life. Lord, have your way in my life. Lord, speak to me. Lord, use me. That should be the prayer of the Spirit-filled believer, always conscious of being a representative of Jesus Christ. Lord, have your way in my life. Lead me in the path of righteousness. Temper my spirit. Temper my mind and my anxiety. And let me walk in confidence knowing that you're going to give me what I need to say. And you're going to help me to do what you want me to do. Because it is in you that you will to do of your good pleasure in me. 
After all, he conquered our greatest enemy. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Why is that? Why is it going to be done for us? What's the key here? It's going to be done for us because you're walking in the Spirit of God and you are in alignment with the will of God because you want to do His will because you love Him. Amen. Amen, Brother Bill. When we abide in Jesus, living in him day by day, then our will becomes more and more aligned with his will, and we can confidently ask what we desire and keep on asking more and more according to his will. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. It's a desire. We live in a world that does not want to be accountable. We live in a world that does not want to be disciplined by the word or no one else. That is the spirit of this age. Verse 15 in closing, praise the Lord, somebody. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. And it it should always lead to prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, Lord, for answering our prayer. When we ask according to God's will and pray God's promises, we have confidence and pray with real and definite faith. Psalms 37 verse 4 and 5, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do it. While we wait for the answers, we pray and praise and thank him because of the testimony from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8, verse 27, 28, one of your favorite verses. Some of you don't even know what verse I'm, you you don't even know this, but you know this. And if he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God, And we know that in all things God works. How does he work? How does he work? For good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Your application, there is nothing more that God can give us than his son. Because his son gave himself, and his son gave us the Holy Spirit. There is no other way to receive eternal life outside of submission to God's will. That's it. How's your future looking? (laughs) Praise the Lord. Let us pray as we pray. Prepare our hearts for communion. Father, we thank you for the message of truth. For Lord Jesus, surely you are the truth, and the truth surely has set us free because we are in love with you, and you are in love with us. Lord, we willingly submit to your will, to your way. And Father, we pray that you will speak in our hearts. And Lord, if there is any wicked way in us, Lord, we pray that you would deliver us from it and cause us to come into your throne room to make our request to you. Father, we pray that you would bless us and bless these elements, the wine and the bread. We pray as we share together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the service to prepare. This is the covenant that God has made with us. 
it's a covenant that has been sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. His one death sealed it. His one death sealed an eternal covenant that he has with us. And each time we come to this table in celebration of his sacrificial death and his burial and his resurrection, it is a time of sober celebration and thanksgiving of what God has done in my life, in your life, in your children's life, and in your children's children's life, and generations following. That one act of mercy, that one act of love, allows us to come to this table. Father, we pray your blessings on our brothers and sisters here who bear your image and likeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come to us. Father, we bless this bread. May it be a blessing to those who partake. Bless the people. 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 Hold your element so that we can share this meal together. I find it always amazing how Jesus chose his disciples. They were all broken men. They all had complex problems and issues. But he chose them to be with him, to sit at the table with him. He washed their feet. He empowered them to spread the message that he was Messiah and that others could be redeemed by his sacrificial death and burial and resurrection, giving all people hope, all people a taste of the goodness of God. And we sit here today among family with all kinds of different issues and needs. The family that God has chosen, the family that God has blessed, we sit together in this place to dine, to reflect, to remember the goodness of God. And he has given us a gift that is more precious than silver or gold, houses or land, political prowesses. He has given us the greatest gift of all times.
Father, we lift up this symbol that represents your body that was broken for us. We know that not one bone was broken in your body, but you were broken for humanity. We lift it up and we ask you to bless it and may it bring healing. May it bring healing in these bodies of clay. In Jesus' name, we partake together. says without the shedding of blood there is no remissions of sins and so as we begin to reflect on the preciousness of blood I can't recall how many blood transfusions that I had but somebody had to give their blood in order to help me recover from the trauma of being a recipient of a heart transplant. And so Jesus' blood covers every sin that was ever committed in this world. And the Bible says that he casts our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. To never be remembered again. And so, wives, don't keep reminding your husbands of their sins that have been forgiven. Husbands, stop reminding your wives of the sins that have been forgiven. Because it's all under the blood of Jesus Christ that we are able to, to stand and be a reflection of him in this world. And we want to give other people the grace that has been given to us. We want to share the love of God that has been poured into our lives. And God did not withdraw his love from us, but he lavished his love upon us in a way that blew our minds. How could someone love me with what I've done or with what has happened in my life. The blood of Jesus has covered it. I want you to come to the conclusion that you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Hold that right there. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. You are covered by his blood. 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 <laughs> Father God, we lift up this cup that represents your blood that was shed for us for the remission of sins. And Lord, we know that each time we celebrate this way, we are proclaiming and declaring to the world 
that you are alive and in us. Take your cup and drink. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Some of you have asked uh, why, uh, why my wife isn't here. My son was involved in a car accident late last night. Someone T-boned him on the driver's side. And um, the car is totaled. And she had to see about getting him to the hospital this morning because he got up and was in a lot of pain. So keep us in your prayers um, and I will keep you in my prayers because we pray for one another that God's will and God's way will always be done in our lives and that people will come to know Jesus Christ through the testimony of our words. Because the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let us stand together. Father God, we invoke your blessings on our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you will always keep us mindful and never forget that we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Use us to propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and peace be with you.